of the World Wrestling Network, Trevin Adams, coming to you from the OCC Roadhouse in Clearwater, Florida. And tonight, WWM Proving Gown presents Burnout. It's a huge night of action. We are kicking things off with a man that everyone loves here in the OCC. It is the one and only Baby Keith in action here. As usual, it is a very warm evening here in Florida. Listen to those 305 chants. And his What is going on? This is not Benji Neptune. CJ Mallory as well as Oscar Weiss. I don't exactly understand what's going on here. We're expecting Benji Neptune. It's been a grudge match, like I said, weeks, months in the making here. Oh! 
Things didn't go your way. Wait, are we, are we gonna see? We are, I think we're in business. It's a handicap match. It's gonna be Benji Neptune in action against CJ Mallory, Oscar Weiss. I'll give it to Benji Neptune. As said, from the perspective of Benji Neptune and Baby Keith, there's a long history, a lot of dislike and most recently this idea of Benji being a life coach bringing to his crew both Oscar Weiss, CJ Mallory I'm interested to see how this is about to play out I guess we're going to have a tag team rules here in this handicap match still not a good setting if you're baby Keith it's an opportunity to show off but it's also an opportunity to get in some trouble Shout out to our official Ben Ruberg making his live stream debut here with the World Wrestling Network. Once again, if you're just joining us, this is WWM Proving Ground. It's Burnout it is a very special feature of WWM Proving Ground before Shine 79, the 12th year celebration, 12th anniversary, if you will, of Shine Wrestling. 305 chance though, continuing here. Not surprisingly, a stated the people love. I mean, love. Baby Keith, and look at the athleticism as well. Baby Keith showing how he can do, as he would say. Of course, representing the Miami boys, running with Chris Malachite, Puma Johnson, ooh, Sander Maddox. Seeing these young men get so much better at WWE Improving Ground, of course, joining us in Full Impact Pro, which, ew, wow, what a chop. You get, of course, check out Full Impact Pro Wrestling as part of your club WWN account, but leave it to CJ, pulling on the hair, the dreads of Baby Keith, and now the Bulldog from Oscar Weiss, and suddenly, the quick pin. I think Baby Keith's finding out what happens. Two on one, as good as you are, the numbers game immediately. Of course, Oscar Weiss, a talent coming to us from over in Europe, as he's throwing those right hands. Debuted back in the beginning of 2017. Spent a lot of time in WXW in Germany. Training with guys like Alexander James, Killer Kelly. Coming to the United States to go to Flatbacks with Tyler Breeze, Sean Spears, and standing on the hand of Baby Keith. Oscar trying to distract her official. But all the while, that five count, the damage being done to the hand, the final stop, and there's CJ throwing things. Trying to stop Baby Keith. You saw signs of life for a mere moment from Baby Keith, but breaking down pretty quickly here is the tandem in this impromptu handicap match. CJ Mallory, Baby Keith in trouble here. It's Mallory with the knee. Another young man, if it's his career, about two years in the sport. Going for the pin. Mallory recently joining us at WWM Proving Ground. As mentioned, you can check out WWM Proving Ground both on Club WWN as well as the official WWN Live at YouTube. And if you want to come to Port Richie, join us every Friday night. Only times we're not there is days like today, but we're here. Wow, what a drop kick. Baby Keith coming to life. Oscar Vice charges in. And another drop kick, an amazing counter by Baby Keith. The talent of Baby Keith is just oof, off the charts. Keith in full control here, fighting off two men. My broadcast colleague, Ron Nimi, on assignment tonight. Usually we talk about the fact that Clearwater, Florida starts chanting for the 305, the Miami area code. What a crossbody by Keith into the pin. And a hair away from defeating two men. You got to think Benji Neptune, whether he's truly stuck in Costa Rica, whatever Benji's doing right now to duck baby Keith, there'd be some anger on Benji if it were to work out that Keith could win. But right now, ooh, malfunction at the junction, if you will. 
It was Oscar holding on to Keith, but Ace Crusher out of nowhere. What's Keith going for? We know Baby Keith can fly, and I get the feeling could be time to see a little swan. Ton action. And it's over. Big win for Baby Keith. Defeating two men here to kick off WWE Proving Ground Burnout, but you know Baby Keith wants him some Benji Neptune. It's gonna only be a matter of time before you see Keith and Benji go at it. I get the feeling you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned to WWNlive.com, get all the details about WWE Proving Ground, when these two might be going at it again. And of course, CJ Mallory, Oscar Vice, they're gonna have some splaining to do Whenever Benji Neptune returns to the United States, assuming he truly is out of the United States, who knows what Benji? He has a life coach in his own mind. He could be trying to coach an entire nation. Stay tuned, though, ladies and gentlemen. Still a lot more here to come. WWM Proving Ground Burnout. Ladies and gentlemen, the following tag team contest is set for one ball. Introducing first. Tag team we've seen coming up together here. WWM Proving Ground. Two peas in a pod, if you will. When you got Jules Bradley, the patriarch of the trailer park, and Big Ray got Brian Colton. Eager to see how this union does, though, against a father-son tag team that are former WWN Proving Ground Tag Team Champions. Good to see these two as a union as well, given the fact that the last time we did see Brian along with Jules, there was a little bit of an argument afterwards. I guess that happens in the trailer park, so to speak. I don't know all my trucker codes, but I'm sure there's a 10 dash something that's not getting along with your buddy, but I'm hoping to see the unity here that it looks like we have on the entrance. And their opponents. As mentioned, former WWN Proving Ground Tag Team Champions, the first ever father-son duo here in the World Wrestling Network to hold gold. What a moment that was. But tonight, they are going to be the measuring stick for Jules and Brian. Show, can they keep up with Rafael Gonzalez and Damian Gemini? Should be one heck of a match. Waiting to see who's going to get things started. I guess it's going to be Jules Bradley as well as Big Dog. What a mullet on Jules. Kind of hard to argue with a mullet. How many people? How many people can pull that off in 2024? Things officially underway here, and it's going to be the trucker start things. Okay, a little bit of a. a 
mix-up here, a change-up, if you will. Throw off the big dog. Of course, Brian Colton can say that he's spent the time getting some training from the big dog. Started his career being trained by the late, great Francisco Chiazzo and Puerto Rican Hound Dog, one of the people that's helped out at the WWN Training Center, joining our staff. And, well, what an opportunity for the trucker Brian Colton to say, hey, I'm not only better than you, but I beat you on the biggest night of WWE Improving Ground we have ever had. Of course, facing the teacher, as we always say, usually it's not the teacher who's going to give away everything he's ever learned. And what is this? I should have known. I leave. I leave a co the commentary alone. Ron Neely's on, on assignment. I got me some baby key. Hey, you know I'm in the booth just after leaving the ring. Look, hey, oh, did you see that one, Jago? Yeah, well, we were already talking about before you got here, the trucker Brian Colton, recent history, has been training with Puerto Rican Hound Dog. What an opportunity to try to show off what he can do and went with that, I thought it was gonna be a front face lock, but could be a knee injury here yeah, for Big Dog. You gotta watch out. Yeah, he's definitely holding on to that knee, feigning that knee. Teacher versus student type matchup right here with Big Dog and the Big Trucker. Oh! <laughs> you know you don't want to get chopped by the dog because he's throwing paws. Boom! You've been there. You know what it feels like. Not a lot of people can say they've lived it. My hand, His handprint is still on my chest. And I don't even have a big chest. Ooh. Puerto Jeez. Rican Hound Dog just a, a wealth of experience and knowledge, man. We've seen here in the World Wrestling Network for quite a while and with ease picking up the trucker, with dumping one down the trucker. Arm. You know how powerful Big Dog is? And... The thing about Big Hold Dog, on, only gets a one count. Big Dog is highly underrated in the Come speed on, and agility department. For a big Come man, on. he's quick, fast, Come and he moves on. in a hurry. Well, and you look at it from the perspective of, again, and now here comes a man who really does move in a hurry, Lil Dog, adding Damian Gemini into the ring and taking down Brian Colton. Father son action, vintage. Puerto Rican hound dog, little dog followed up by a big dog, good lord. And this is why, hold on the pin again. On, this is why these two were former WWN Proving Ground Tag Team Champions. Definitely were, definitely were. I believe they took those titles from the boys back when the Miami boys held on to those tag titles. Have you ever seen somebody wrestle in Tim's? <laughs> Not so much. As now Jules Bradley with that mullet he's so proud of about two years in the sport. That mullet is golden, I'd be proud of it too. Ooh, oh what an elbow. Oh! There go the educated feet of the little dog. And hook in the leg. The two count only. Damian Gemini impressed as well. Of course, Big Dog coming off of a, an injury recently, and Damian in some singles action had been looking good, but definitely holding his own, keeping his head above water, and showing that he is worthy to go one on one with anybody here in the WWE locker room. As you know, though, it's all about the unity in a tag team situation. And Jules, wow! Look what like a, a suplex neck breaker? Exactly, pin. Unique offense, able in mid-air to change the direction that Lil Dog was going down, and ultimately the damage has been done. I ain't gonna lie, I thought that was a three count for real, though. Suplex neck breaker is absolutely devastating. Jules, already mentioned before, young man who still getting his career started, but really from the perspective of his history, I mean, it's the reason he's the patriarch of the, the trailer park. Of course, he's in the wrong part of town now is here comes Big Dog Puerto Rican Hound Dog. Yeah, he's not in the trailer park. He's in the dog house right now. And you don't want to be there if you're not a dog. The tandem suplex. The isolation isn't enough. Close our senior official Chuck Oren in there. It's a two count, a close, very close two count. Oh, my God. Yeah, great headbutt there. Big Dog showing you how he does once again. And if you want to see when Little Dog, Big Dog became our tag team champions, all of that and more available as part of your club WWN subscription at WWNlive.com. You got Shine Wrestling, you got Full Impact Pro, WWN Proving Ground, so much more. The proverbial $9.99 a month sporting independent wrestling. $9.99 is a steal. I highly recommend you. Good Lord, what a chop hey, you to can subscribe. You, you can barely get a coffee at Starbucks. Not even a two count there. Jewel's showing some heart, showing some mullet size right now. But I definitely, definitely advise you to subscribe. But don't watch the Hound Dogs win the titles. <laughs> hey, remember, there were three teams in there, so you don't have to feel bad. You're right. Uh, but right. Damian Gemini up in the corner, 
Jules Bradley in control and yeah, Damian Gemini is gonna feel way worse than I am if he if he lets his move connect. Oh my God! Spanish fly pinfall. Are uh, we gonna call that a mullet fly? Jules Bradley just hit that picture perfect straight out of the trailer. Hey, I'm impressed. As a guy who used to watch the SAT in the early 2000s in the Philadelphia area, to see one man do it that well. You gotta give him. You gotta give him some credit. His flowers. No, there's that beautiful stop. Little dog just gave him some feet to the mat. Oh! Man spring and now another drop kick to the sternum. And Jules paying the price. And the leg is hooked. Only gets a two count. I just want to ask you a question, Trevin. Do you know anything about airline tickets? I just landed from uh, Red Eye from Los Angeles. It sucked. I'm really tired. I don't, I don't know if Benji Neptu couldn't afford one. <laughs> but there's got to be a reason why he's ducking me, Trevin. And we'll talk a little more about that in a moment as Jules, at least for the moment, creating that separation, trying to get to the trucker, Brian Colton. Yeah, hit him with the trailer park stunner. Trying to get the big rig back in. Here comes the big dog. Here comes Mr. Timms. Oh my God, not in quick enough. Yeah, this is not a good truck stop to stop at. Should have been Wawa, not uh, not the TA. Oh, I told you about Big Dog's quickness. It's underrated and his strength is second to none. That Samoan drop with the full weight, the pin. I don't know how Brian Colton found a way to get the shoulder up. You got to think, we're going to still be wiping parts of that mat up from Brian Colton's body being on it. I'm surprised he's even conscious right now. Oh, my God, but he just might be unconscious now after that slam. Picture perfect moonsault. Somebody get flash photography. And the, ooh. Oh, yeah. about to say the end of the match, but no, indeed, only a two count. I'll give it to the official right there, and... You see Jules Bradley looking on, concerned for his partner. We talked about before you got here, these two had a little bit of little bit of issue the last time we saw them at Proving Ground. I thought for a moment Jules had gotten a tag, and maybe he did. In fact, I think I'm right. I think Chuck Warren is letting Damian Gemini know there was a blind tag. And what does Jules have? Oh! That, brass nuts? that boy's got the nuts on him. Dirty man. Oh! That's what? Filthy. Ring the bell. Brass knuckles used, and I see Big Dog is complaining. He's telling the official what happened, and look at that! Look at that! Look at that. Putting the brass knucks in the pocket of Brian Colton. Wow! Planting the evidence but on now, your well, partner. Well, there you go. And see, Chuck Warren. He's saying, "I heard you got brass knuckles. I gotta check you." Oh my! Look at the look at the the man. Jules is a master, master thief, master strategist. And I think it may be official. I think this is going to be it. Doesn't matter. Brass nuts were used. And what what's Hound Dog saying here? He's saying, uh, "Check Brian." Yeah, they, you got to check them both. If you're being honest. Oh, he better make a decision. Oh, Brian! Brian revealed it. Gave up the brass nuts. He didn't even go to the interrogation room and he gave it up. Look at that! And the match has been reversed. And look at the doggies with the W. Justice has been served to the big rig and the big mullet. It's one of those moments having two both, not just the senior official on Chuck Warren, but the veteran and Puerto Rican Hound Dog made that point. Look. We got screwed. It was highway robbery. What just happened in the ring? Jules Bradley just took out Brian Colton. And he's absolutely pummeling him. Does he have those brass nuts on? This is what you want. He does. This is getting oh out of control. God. Big dog coming back in. Big dog coming with the save. Remember what I mentioned? Brian Colton's been training with the Puerto Rican Hound Dog. And that might be part of why there was that reluctance from Colton to hide the brass nuts and obviously Jules Bradley having none of it getting out of there pretty quick but it, it did look like Colton has some type of respect for his teacher and you can definitely see that his teacher has respect for him the student big dog checking in on, on Brian after those vicious assaults and punches from Jules Bradley with those brass nuts Keith you got to think there's going to be more to follow when it comes to this situation WWN Proving Ground every Friday night, WWN DC in Port Ritchie, Florida. Can't be there live, 
Club WN as well as the WN Live YouTube, one of the places we're streaming right now live. You can check it out for absolutely free. And in fact, how about some more absolutely free wrestling? Let's keep things rolling on. Hey! Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall. A little bit of intrigue on this one, though, Baby Keith, because we have a guest official. You see right there, Nick Quinones with Royce Adams right behind him. Trevin, I ain't even gonna hold you. I ain't even gonna lie to you. I don't like Ned, nobody in that group, the Sons of Booty. I don't like Ned, none of them. So I'm not gonna lie, I'm very excited to see this match and watch them beat each other up while their leader referees it. Well, there's been a lot of issues, obviously, between the Miami Boys and the Sons of Battle, but within the Sons of Battle, we've seen some issues that I'll talk a bit about here as this matchup gets going. Really? Really? Hey, look. That's the music for the Challenger Alpha T. You, you had to restart that garbage. I didn't want to hear the siren twice. Good lord. Hey, that's the sound booth, not me. How we go from how we go from two Puerto Rican big dog he hound dogs? Is triple Ferris, Florida. He is AKC register weighing in at 250 pounds. Wait, I just heard that for the first time. AKC registered. Yeah. What purebred is Alpha T? Hey, I have absolutely no clue. That is the first time I'm hearing it. But I'm just wondering how we go from Puerto Rican hound dogs to a canine that literally has a leash on them. a lot of history here when it comes to the Sons of Battle and how we got where we are right now situationally. Of course, things most recently breaking down. FIP established dominance. You were actually a part of the situation. We opened up with the Southern Stampede, a very unique matchup where ultimately what you end up with is matches that get set up for the rest of the night based on the order of elimination and well, the way the order of elimination happened, suddenly you ended up in a four-way fray, if you will, for that championship. And hold on. Well, you heard it right there from Nick and Jonas. That fatal four-way that I mentioned from FIP established dominance was available as part of your club WWN subscription at WWNlive.com. Ended up having you, Baby Keith, Ended up having Dre Xavier, of course, Alpha T as well, and Krieger. But what we saw was both earlier in the night during the Southern Stampede, you noticed you had Nick Quinones, you had Royce Adams backing up pretty quickly, Alpha T. Krieger, as the night went on, Krieger had to demand those two come, come back, get behind him. But, it, of course, a lot of the issue goes back to when Alpha T faced then-champion John Strange for the WWE Improving Ground Championship. 
Krieger being the one to point out that the foot was under the rope of Strange. Alpha T could have won the championship that night. He did not. Took a while for Alpha to finally see the footage, and once he did, well, you've seen how things have gotten worse and worse. And oh, the takedown, oh, oh. the right hands, and Alpha T cannot wait to get his hands on Krieger. Remember again, too, that fatal four-way at FIP I mentioned. Alpha T had the match won, and it was Krieger who stole it to win himself. Oh, my God. Yeah, head, head and back first into uh, that guardrail. Not to cut you off, Trevin, but we being honest, I had that match won until that no good Benji Neptune came out and cost me yet another opportunity at a championship. That's absolutely Victor. true. And of course, Benji ducking you today, as you stated. Um, the man is scary. But right now, Alpha T doesn't look scared of his, oh. of his partner, the heavyweight champion of Proving Ground, Krieger. I've watched Alpha T continue to improve. And it was just maybe three weeks ago, I want to say at most, Drew Gulak held a very special seminar at the WWNTC. Hold on, could be the end. And Alpha T was one of the people who participated. And I, I watched myself real time. Alpha T under that learning tree, a man so talented. So here's Alpha T, who's already a big, tough dude. You add to him some more mat wrestling. You add to him some more weapons he can use. How are you going to beat a guy like this, Keith? Um, honestly, I, it's hard to even tell you because look at this. He's out here slamming Krieger at will and damn near slamming him through the mat. There's not even really much you could do with raw power like that, but hope he gets tired, maybe take out the legs. But when you got a guy carrying you like a sack of potatoes, it's not easy to get a victory over. Of course, take nothing away from our champion, Krieger. God. So reason has been the champion, but now it could be the end. And impressively, Krieger finding a way to get a shoulder up. But you and I both know, Keith, heck, you know better than me. When you get power slam like that, the oxygen's gone. And look at the, the debate going on here. Is Alpha questioning the Quinones? I ain't gonna lie. I mean, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm coming off a match, but to me, it did look like a slightly slow count. And I have seen Krieger demand, oh my goodness. Ooh the respect of the clique that he's in, and they have fallen in line pretty much with Krieger. Well, the pecking order has definitely evolved when it comes to the Sons of Battle, and Krieger now making some demands here of our official Nick Quinones. My question is, if Krieger's running the show, is Nick Quinones still technically the king of battle? <laughs> well, anybody can call themselves a king, but at the end of the day, there's one man who has a championship, that is Krieger, that WWM Proving Ground Championship. And what I want to see is what happens if Alpha T does win that championship tonight? What happens to the pecking order? Heck, is there still a Sons of Battle at that point? If 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 God is on my side, there will not be a Sons of Battle by the end of the uh, by the end of the night. Alpha Charlie. Oh in. my God! It might not be a Krieger by the end of the night. That's spine buster knocking out. No. Impressive. When you look at Alpha T, less than two years in the sport, guys like Jay Lethal, Dave Mercury, Big Con. My man, Big Con. And as I mentioned, taking the time to learn from guys like Gulag. Of course, Gulag made that shocking return at FIP established dominance. You can check that out on Club WWE and get a little bit of a sample as well on the YouTube. He did. Hey, you got to get the plugs. It's free, free stream here. Hey, man, I was unfortunate. And wow! Nice little final cut right there. And that final cut could be it, Pin. Only gets a two count. I wasn't fortunate enough to last in the stampede long enough to get in there with Drew Gulak, really because of these two guys in the ring. But Alpha T doing a smart thing and getting getting that knowledge from somebody like Gulak. Oh, my goodness. Well done by Krieger, as you stated. It was really the chaos. Drake Xavier, yourself, these two men, all tangled up, getting eliminated at once, as stated the uniqueness of the Southern Stampede. We'll talk more about that match when we get to our main event because, of course, that's how Jonathan Hudson got that opportunity at the FIP World Heavyweight Championship tonight. Do not but get look at the Look at the tape. Do you see that? The tape of Krieger in use, and Quinones saw it. Quinones sees it. Not too fast of a count and not too much of an effort to get him off of Alpha T. What is really going on here? Because I ain't gonna lie, me and the boys don't rock like that. So I don't know what the SOB's got going on. Well, things have gotten really ugly. Bend in those rules, and there's Quinones. Say that what you will, he is at least consistent in the count. I appreciate a consistent cadence and official. He is. I mean, he's the king of battle, so maybe he wants a little physicality in this match. Maybe he wants these guys to really get it out of their system so they can get back on track. And that's pretty much trying to dominate 
WWN as a whole. I mean, oh, they, I agree. No, I agree. I mean, Quinones himself said oh. he needs this to end. It's been going on far too long. Alpha, such a big dog himself, could not be pulled over there off the top by Krieger. It's going to take a little more than a clothesline from Krieger. You got to think Krieger's, what, 60 pounds less than Alpha, maybe? Got to be, because I'm probably like 100 pounds less than Alpha. <laughs> but yeah, Krieger's going to have to get some momentum and hit the rubbers if he wants him to go over. But you can't get a big dog over if he's on his belly. Well, and what's, again, impressive here. Ooh. See the jaw jacking again. I was going to say what's impressive here, though, is the fact that Krieger has really been able to find a way back after that beating, after the physicality of this matchup so far. Hey, man, he's a champion for a reason. I mean, he doesn't have the title because he can't fight. I mean, I'm really impressed that Keon is... Oh! And I would see arm blinded by the, by, the, by the glare from Krieger's head. That shoulder tackle made the difference. Tank count being applied by Quinones. Remember, big Nick Q, too, about five, six years in the sport. Yeah, he's a veteran. Course, exactly. You were taking the words out of my mouth. Veteran from the military. That's knows, right. knows how to apply the rules. And I, I, who, who's going to get up? I, I, I can't tell you. I mean, it looks like the champion is stirring a little bit more than the challenger. Krieger is back to his feet before Alpha, but Alpha now back to his feet. Oh, my goodness. Krieger Big coming right back hand. in, and so is Alpha. And you stated it. Big right hands. Both men are throwing bombs. And Quinones giving them that time. You got to think Quinones thinking to himself, look, in the Army, when he was deployed in Iraq, he got mad at somebody. You know, yeah, sometimes you guys go go out back, have that fight, but here's a Fez press. Hey, you, you Ooh, you was that a rake to the eye from, from Krieger to Alpha T? I yeah. couldn't quite see. That's exactly what it looked. I thought Alpha T was kind of trying to bite Krieger, but oh, Krieger took advantage with a rake to the eye. I don't think Keona saw it. Oh! The neck breaker applied well by Krieger. And Krieger's definitely had a heck of a reign as champion, but we really could be looking towards the end here. Are we looking at a flying German right now? Oh! There's the elbow. Pinfall. Still no. not enough. Alpha T with the wherewithal to kick out. It looked like at one after Krieger came from the top with an elbow. And you see right there the Iron Claw. You got to watch out for the Iron Claw. Been a victim of it. It does not feel even remotely good. In the history of our sport, we have seen so many men apply this Iron Claw. And as you stated, if it gets you, it is debilitating. It's absolutely oh, see, You see how Alpha's doing anything he can to not have that claw be put on two hands. Two hands trying to stop Krieger from applying that devastating claw. And, oh! Action biting earlier, I think, this time indeed. Alpha T. Hey, maybe he didn't eat before the match. Oh! The K9! Is that enough? And what is Royce Adams doing up there? What is going What the hell is going on here? Who the hell is that? Yo! Oh. What is that monster? Oh, oh Rick taking God. down Alpha T! Jonas is absolutely blinded. Royce Adams has gone crazy. What is happening right now? Was this a setup? This this can't be. Krieger now. Oh my God, applying that disgustingly devastating claw. The Iron Claw, Alpha T, defenseless after being taken out by that massive man. And the pin, it's over. Trevor, what? What did I just see? I have no clue. A massive man charging in. You have Royce Adams jumps up on the apron, distracts Nick Quinones just when Krieger was in trouble. Bro. And then a man about twice as wide as he was talking, charging in, attacking Alpha T. I don't even know where the guy went. Bro, who, what? First of all, how is he that big and disappeared that fast? That's first of all. The man was a mammoth. Oh, Alpha. Oh, I think, hold on, I can't really see. Is that him right? You see what I mean? Debate going on here. Oh! Oh, Royce Adams attacking Nick Quinones. What? And there's that big man. They come from under the ring? Oh my, oh my, oh my. Keith, I have no clue who this is, but clearly it cahoots with Krieger, with Royce Adams in the attack. 
not just the, an Alpha team. This has been a setup for Nick Quinones. Yo, this I can't believe it. And now the belt, the championship belt in the hands of Green. Oh! Into the head of Quinones. Quinones absolutely smacked with the heavyweight title. The Nelson slam and the hell just happened. Krieger, this is chaos. Krieger just absolutely laid out the king of battle in cahoots with Royce Adams and I don't even know who that big old dude is. I am in shock, baby Keith. And you and I both know the mastermind is that man in the middle. It is Krieger, our WWM Proving Ground Champion. It looks like Krieger said, I'm taking over officially and just booted K-9 and the King of Battle out of the, SO, of the SOBs. I think the SOBs are over. You saw the flag left in the ring, or at least when it comes to these men here. As Krieger heading back with that man, we got to find out who that is. I'm not going to be the one to go back there. That'll be Ron Nimi's punishment. We'll, yeah. we'll send Ron when he comes back to go talk to whoever the hell that was. Yeah, we'll let Ron deal with that. I ain't even got the boys with me, so I think I'm going to vibe up here with you. Yeah, I need you here. You can't leave. You can't leave. <laughs> hey, we, we don't know what's going to happen between K-9 and Keonis, but we will be here streaming live. More action coming soon. Hey! A definite shocker here in our WWM Proving Ground Championship match. Another one of those situations. You're going to stay tuned. WWNlive.com, all our social media. And of course, you got to think WWM Proving Ground every Friday night. Poor Richie is going to be held to pay for Krieger, for, for Royce Adams, and for whoever the hell that man is. The mystery man, the big man, the man that. We're gonna keep things rolling on here, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, the following tag team contest is scheduled for Ripple. It is a Sicilian Street Fight. Introducing first. Another one of those situations, Keith. A lot of history here. We'll talk a bit about that in detail in just a moment. making their way to the ring. T.J. Brady, Giovanni Flores, two men trained by Francisco Chiazzo, former head trainer of the WWN Training Center. And of course, a man we lost earlier this year, far too young. But the- One love, man, one love. Absolutely. So many men were touched in our sport, so many athletes, but I think these two have taken some of the nastier parts of Francisco. Yeah, they definitely have. I mean, Chiazzo is one of the first guys to give us Miami boys a chance and we know what Kiasso brought to the industry and these guys took all of the nastiest parts of Frankie and they're using it to their advantage. And you know a Sicilian street fight, nothing good comes from a Sicilian street fight. Them boys walking in with weapons, they mean business. And their opponents. Unique way for Uni Vice to make his way here to the ring. You know, you know, Uni is a Miami native as well. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I got, I gotta get with my boy and party with him. But right now, I don't think he's gonna be in a partying mood. He looks like that he's probably be in a war. He's got a shopping cart full of weapons. 
He's got the big brute with him. This is about to be a battle. A street fight, to be exact. And it's interesting that Giovanni, that TJ Brady, taking their time here, waiting to get things started. Taking a shot here. And oh, oh, taking their eyes off their opponents. And that was a mistake for UD Vice, for Ray Elliott, Vice and Violence, the combination of the two. I don't know if they was paying homage to the game by spitting in the air or getting hype over. That's a new routine, but TJ and Giovanni are all about business, and they said, you know what, we're going to take advantage of that. Well, that's why I was shocked, as I mentioned earlier, that they were even sitting there waiting. The Four men here, all having that history trained by Francisco Chiazzo, all going obviously different directions with how they've decided to apply that training. But things have just gotten worse and worse between these men in recent history. And it really goes back. Does he does he have a blicky? Was that a water gun? I have no clue. Ew, you need to be on some stuff, man. That boy is lit. They got Giovanni isolated right now. Maybe that worked. This smells like piss! Hey, all I know is Vice and Violence have some of the, the most entertaining videos on social media. And Giovanni waiting a little too long. Mexican Mayhem getting oh caught by the Brute. Yeah, he just ran into a Brute wall. And, and, and I would say some of the history, the issues here really began going all the way back to the King of the Southeast Battle Royal. All the way back to WWE on IPW Hardcore Wrestling when we presented Salute to the Shot Caller, the Francisco Chiato Tribute Show back in February. Of course, it was Juni who won, but it was TJ Brady who had been an official up to that point, putting himself in the match, took off his an official shirt, and jumped on in, and then, of course, get it last year and last year, starting La Armeria. See, that's why with, this, with the history between all of these guys, I feel like this match is extremely, extremely personal. We got cookie sheets being thrown. TJ scurrying and Giovanni right now getting worked in the corner by Uni. Here comes those patented elbows. Oh my God. We have seen many a time. Oh! When Lord. Vice and Violence work together, team can be unstoppable as for Giovanni Flores, Mexican Mayhem. Oh my God. Taken out, you know, young man who's got a background in boxing was the Connecticut State Champion pin. Well, Broken hey. up by TJ, but it's a little different than a formal boxing match when you're in a fight with no rules, a Sicilian street fight. Yeah, a boxing match in a Sicilian street fight, not let alone in just a regular street fight. It's very much different as Giovanni felt with that chair being clocked upside his noggin. I don't even know. What is that, a nightstick? What, what is that you got? Could be a nightstick, and looks like uh, Uni has something in mind. I don't even know what that is. That I, I think it's a giant stick of meat. That's, first of all, paws. Like salami, maybe, I guess? That would go with the Sicilian idea. Oh, that uh, it makes sense. Ooh. Kick to the gut of TJ Brady. And of course, TJ's found a way to, especially in singles action, find a way to make that life of vice and violence hell. So here we go. TJ, ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh my God. I think the meat why, stick hurts yeah, more. Yeah, why is the meat stick sounding off more than the night stick? And they're just absolutely beaten down TJ in the middle of the ring while he's got a garbage can covering his whole body, basically. I don't know, in Sicily, is it a uh, Philly club? Is, I don't, that a, is that a UK thing? I'm not very worldly, Keith, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, honestly, Billy Club, Nightstick, nobody ever really likes them, let alone getting <laughs> beat with them. The Sicilian street fight. I oh my God, I, I don't even know if TJ is even aware of what city he's in right now. Yeah, the Vice and Violence team looking really good here in this street fight. Yeah, they're definitely living up to the second half of their name, being violence. And as I stated, so much in WWE Improving Ground, these four men, whether in singles competition or even tag team competition, TJ's found a way to, along with Gio, to find ways to steal victories. And now we're back to the shopping cart. Wonder who we stole that shopping cart from? Probably Publix. Oh my Ooh. God! I don't, think, I, don't, I don't think those are Publix colors unless that's what Publix looks like in Miami. Hey man, hey, that's the Vice colors. Hint, Vice and Violence. There you go. And TJ is going to find himself in the cart, perhaps. Yeah, I don't think he has a permit or a license to be driving that, but Uni right now is operating on his own rules. And we are going for a ride right now. Man, it's been a long time since I've been in a cart. How about you? Um, I was in a go-kart not too long ago, picking up speed. But is that a table? That is a table. And, of course, the fans here at the 
OCC Roadhouse, the WWE Unfaithful, always happy to see some violence. Yeah, look at those Miami Boy shirts in the crowd. Yeah, but G -G -G look, you bring some of those with you? If people come, they can meet you and buy some? Oh, yeah, they can always, you know, come up, purchase a couple, and then Ooh. watch Uni ram TJ into his own partner with a shopping cart and then dump him out like last nice trash. Yeah, I think La Armeria has barely been able to... El Armeria, I keep putting a La in there, I apologize. El Armeria, you can tell I'm not very Sicilian. Hey. I've not really gotten out of the gate here other than the attack to begin the, to begin the fight here. Listen, after those chair shots, I don't think they even know what venue they're at. I don't even think they know that they're in this match right now. They're getting sauced and tossed like a wing combo from Wingstop. I heard the wings are even better here at the OCC Roadhouse. You know what? The wings are absolutely phenomenal here. And during intermission, I'm going to treat myself to some because I got that victory earlier tonight. Yeah, you more than earned it. TJ Brady is prone in a bad way. And what is vice and violence got in mind here? They're about to smash him. Oh, no! He's in, but yes, your reaction is correct. And not only did TJ get out of the way, he's got the billy club. Oh! Back of the knee. That can blow your whole knee out. You will lose a wheel for the billy club to the back of the leg. Yeah, official Dominic Coco trying to, trying to Talk reason, but the truth is all the officials here for looking for anybody to quit, get pinned, or submitted. He's just here to make a decision. And the, the one decision he can't make is to throw this out via DQ because there is no DQ. I think it would have to be one of those situations where the competitors are in such a bad way you got no choice. Ooh. Yo. Right to the head. My eardrums almost exploded by how loud that garbage can lid sounded off of Uni's noggin. Keith, you felt things like that. How much does that just fry your brains real time where you're out in the middle of the ring? Listen, listen, it fries my brains more than the shenanigans that I be partaking in. Yo, you're dazed, you're confused, you're seeing triple and quadruple after a shot to the head like that. It's very hard to get back into a match when you're seeing quadruple. And that may be the situation here. As much as Vice and Violence looked very impressive earlier, right now it's TJ Brady, it's Giovanni Flores. They are not only taking control, but Gio in phenomenal shape, and TJ showing that, hey, you know what? You underestimate me, I will beat you. He's a tough dude. Yo, I'm not gonna lie with you. I don't care how big and strong you are. When you go through a table, you're done for. That's why the Brute has not been able to get back since, since going through that table. That's probably why Biggie hasn't been in the ring since I put his ass through a table. But nonetheless, TJ and Giovanni have brought in another table with their matching boots on. Oh! Somehow, the Brute is back in effect. Look at the Brute back on his feet. Woo! Things are getting nastier and nastier. Hey, I haven't seen somebody get hit with a belt like that since my little brother was in third grade. <laughs> Good Lord, that had to be, that was a personal, that was a personal whip right there. You said it right though, things are that personal between these four athletes. You come up training together, obviously you have that difference of opinion and Giovanni Flores may be the one that's about to pay for the transgressions of El Armeria. Oh, it looked like Giovanni was about to have some splinters in his back, but right now, Brute's got a low blow I, I think that is the tools used to build the ring just got pulled in in a toolbox and used as a weapon. Oh! That arm tied up in a bad way. And oh! Unfortunately for Ray Elliott going through the table. TJ using to eat the feet. I'm going to have to call Chris. Because he just put the big brute through the table with the eat the feet. The two count. Only gets a two. I mean, hey, big brute's a big dude. Two tables can't keep him down. You're going to have to do more than that. I mean, I don't know how much more personal it can get. TJ literally hung Unis last week at Proving Ground. Well, this right now could be as bad or worse. You see Uni Vice getting set up in a corner. And El Armeria. They have nothing but bad intentions on their mind. Big chop to the chest. I think the dude with the cowboy hat in the third row just caught Uni's nipple from being chopped off by TJ. Oh my God. TJ heading to the top. Is he I, thinking coast to coast? I know damn well he's not going coast to coast. TJ oh! goes coast to coast. So impressive. I can't believe TJ Brady just flew 18 feet across the ring. Oh my God. End of the matchup, perhaps. How in the absolute, how did Uni kick out? 
I'm in shock too. What is that? What is being what is used? What is he spraying a mace? Pepper spray? Axe deodorant? What is it? Axe cologne? What is that? I think it is. I think it. I think it's Mace. And now inside of the ring goes Giovanni oh. Flores with a big frog splash. End of the matchup. Our Mario won. Trevor, I ain't gonna lie with you. I'm so glad I'm up here in the booth with you and not in that car wreck of a match. We got tables, garbage cans, chairs, and bodies lying everywhere. That was physicality and then some here. The Sicilian street fight and four men who clearly were there to destroy one another, leaving it all in the ring. And ultimately, you're right. I don't know if it was Mace, whatever it was, being sprayed into the eyes of Uni and. Anything goes in a Sicilian street fight, digging deep. El Armeria, victorious. But you and I both know vice and violence takes a lot to keep these two down. Yeah, it, it definitely does. I mean, two tables, man. Garbage cans, chairs, cookie sheets, low blows, and Axe Mace pepper spray. I don't even know Uni can really see right now, for real. for years here in our sport. I've seen the evolution of this young man into what's become truly a veteran. He's up to about nine years in the sport now, Keep, and keeps getting better and better. And tonight, it's a four-way fray. It's a big opportunity. Turn some heads here. WBM Proving Ground Burnout. We are streaming live. Facebook, YouTube will live in perpetuity the rest of time. Who's gonna win this one? Um, I'm not gonna lie. I probably got my money on Ares. I think Ares might take the victory here. And his opponent. Well, we will find out soon enough. Nick Swift, another young athlete who's been impressing in WWE Improving Ground, getting a big opportunity here tonight to show what he can do in a WWE ring. The leading man to Swift, Nick Swift. And their opponent. D, as you can tell, a very popular man with the ladies here. I'm not surprised. We got a couple Caribbeans here in this match, but hey, Poppy D walking around with SpongeBob House. The ladies seem to love it. You can't hate on them for that. Ain't gonna lie with you. I'm not gonna lie, if I'm a betting man, though, I'm taking the over or RS, and I got my money on RS.
A lot of talent here in this young man, and a lot of talent in the ring, and one more to go. And their opponent. For those of you who've been around for a while watching the World Wrestling Network, you might remember Slade Porter in American Combat Wrestling all the way back in 2015. Young man has come back in incredible shape with a much different attitude. Not running around with red solo cups anymore, so to speak, and being a frat boy, it's a private eye. It's a very interesting career to bring, and of course, having professional wrestling, but hey, if there's anything professional wrestling's good at, Keith, and you know this. It's about finding the dirt. There's a lot of dirt in professional wrestling. Hey, there's so much dirt we can build mountains. But I'm not gonna lie, the private eye better figure out how you can pull away with a victory here in this four-way fray against three other hungry competitors looking to make a name and climb higher in the ranks here in WWE. Proven. Since Porter came back to the World Wrestling Network, had some good showings, but I think he's a bit frustrated about ending up in a four-way free here tonight. You know, I think it's one of those things for a lot of talent. You're, of course, looking to be able to put your best foot forward, but there's opportunities and there's ways to take advantage of the opportunity. But I think I think there was just a hope here that Slade Porter, after being part of a four-way fray just a week ago at WWE Improving Ground, he didn't want to end up in a four-way fray again. And, and that's the thing, especially because that one didn't go well. And, and here's the thing, you got to understand, from the perspective of if you're a talent and you're looking to not just turn heads, but be the victor, you need eyes in the back of your head. You need to watch from anywhere because you never know what's going to happen. Hell, get that, get that pineapple out. <laughs> Hey man, Here's the you know, real thing. Does Bobby have to get the pineapple out? That's the real question. Is that an illegal weapon or is that just some some energy for him? Well, <laughs> here's the thing. In a four-way situation, he kind of got really lax rules. A lot of arguments about are there count outs? Are there, you know, are there disqualifications? And I'm trying to figure out though what's going on here with the pineapple. Bobby, of course, made the point that, hey, you know, I faced Slade before. I've been victorious. Poppy, another one. Like I said, a guy we've really been impressed with since joining us here at WWE Improving Ground. It's Coming out of the... What? Somebody get him a gun. Somebody arrest this man. Sherlock Holmes can't be asking for blickies in the middle of a match. This isn't Glock Mania. Are we going to have a match? Ooh. Almost ate that pineapple. I, I, the, the bell never rang, right? Am I crazy? No, I think the bell did ring. Bell definitely rang. Oh, the bell definitely rang. I missed it. Bell rang and his chest is ringing right now. I didn't even know if the match began. I'm doing a good job today. Listen, man, you know it's been a it's been a crazy night so far. My opponent fled the country. The Hound Dogs were victorious. Well, and Brian Colton got beat with brass knucks. Hey, as I mentioned, you got to have your eye on. Of course, Ares Perez now going to take the time to get the release. Is this release the, the tights, so to speak. This is something I've noticed from Perez. Sometimes he'll have the matchup and choose never to get out of the gear. And I don't know if there's a meaning to that. Is this, this like waiting in Dragon Ball Z? It, it could be. I don't know what the stripping of the pants do. Because right now he just got stripped of, of chest skin from that chap from Nick Swift. Who swiftly chopped it. And Swift, Poppy D working together. Wow. Wow. Squat before the suplex, that was quite impressive. Guys looking very strong in the middle of the ring. Swift in himself. Four years in the sport, I think Poppy's up to about two or three. Ooh, what a slap. And swiftly slapped Poppy D in the mouth. Poppy D came right back here. Oh! It was going back and forth for a second until Poppy D came flying off the ropes. Swift is on oh. quite a few talents, but Poppy D, I stated he had slayed no Stranger's the one another Poppy going right at Slade Porter. Swift got planted here. Oh! Yes, yeah, Swift might have something in mind. Add something in mind until you met a forearm from our end and then a boot. And here comes. Oh! 
The dive by Ares Perez. Landing on his feet, the man can do it all. He can dance, he can fly, he can stick the landing. And here comes Swift, swiftly! Flying through the air. Swift, not only living up to that name, the ability to fly. Did you hear him, Trevin? He's just too swift. The man is just too swift. Hey, when, I ain't finna argue with him. When you hang out with guys like Matt Seidel, as one of your trainers, Pitbull number one, there's a wide variety of folks that have had a hand in teaching Nick Swift, who has held gold. Oh! Coming off, going for the pin. A swift splash. And it would have been over if it wasn't for Slade Porter. Hey. He got a, he got the clue, and he broke up the pin before the match was over. Poppy D checking on his pineapple. Hey, I told you, Slate Porter just one week removed from a fatal four-way type situation, four-way fray. Knows how things can go. He should have used that four-way that we, he was in last time as a little blueprint on what he could do this time. He just absolutely dropped Swift with one single punch. Excuse me. And temporary teamwork, and oh. Poppy D could be finished. Wow, sweeping the leg. Slade, a little bit of a immediate oh. shining wizard to follow it. The man Imme has gone crazy. Down goes to the suspenders. Yeah, immediately turning on what looked like there was going to be unity. And I mean, you have to. Ultimately, one man's going to win this thing. And Slade Porter showing how good he is, looking Drive. great. Swift now the pin. Three. Only gets a two count. You got to think, could have won this thing. Ari's Perez, though, this time the one to break it up. Perez, the veteran, as stated earlier. Perez yeah. right now clutching at his ribs. Oh! Stiff forearm to the mouth, to the chin. Perez is hard, or excuse me, used to being hit hard. I mean, think about it. This is a guy who's got a black belt in Dutch Muay Thai, Shogun been, Martial Arts. I've been in the ring with him, and I can definitely confirm he is probably top three hardest guys that's ever hit me in that ring. Oh! Swift taking advantage of how long it took to get things untangled in the corner, and now it's Arias Perez who's left alone and Nick Swift coming in. Hey man, the man moves swiftly and he moves precise. But the private eye right there on the case. We got electric tear activity going. We got a, oh, deal. Wow, the electric chair, the bulldog off the top. But watch out for Poppy D. Almost looked like a cutter from the top. Here comes Poppy D dropping an elbow on both and RS and Nick Swift covering both of them as well. Wow, a hair away. Hit them both, that would have been absolutely nuts. You could have bragged and then some of your Poppy D beating two men. Oh, watch out for the pineapple. Like I said, oh. a little bit looser, but the pineapple kicked into Slate Porter. Almost a trouble in paradise, like maneuver, like kick. Springboard, oh, DDT. Landed basically on the pineapple. You're kidding me, it's over, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, Trevin, there you have it. If you eat your fruits and vegetables, you can walk away out of a four-way fray with the victory. Hey, cannot argue with that. Poppy D looking great. Ladies and gentlemen, though, if you're especially a young one, I do recommend taking the pineapple. Usually what you're supposed to do is cut it, pour it. There's actually good stuff inside of the dangerous part, but still, we'll count it. Fruits and vegetables, baby, winning the day. Hey, I wonder, is that, do you think that one is good enough to eat? Because I'm starving right now. You think Poppy would slice that up for me? Hey, you got two more matches to hang out with me, and then you can find out. Big win for Poppy D. Kidding aside, young man, sky is the limit. Disappointment on the face of R.S. Perez. All of these talents looking so good here in this four-way fray. Opportunity knocked. They all tried to seize it, but tonight was for Poppy D. And you got to think, though, stay tuned to WWM Proving Ground because you and I both know these guys, they're going to mix it up again. There's going to be opportunities for everybody to get that little bit of revenge, get the win back, show what you can do. Oh, for sure, for sure. I'm pretty sure these guys are going to want to get a little bit of payback on Poppy, Poppy D for walking away with the victory. Continue to climb the ranks of possibly maybe one of these guys even go after a title. How about it's time for our first of two championship matches that we have left to end this event. And I am incredibly excited about this one. Let's keep things going. Hey! Please know the following tag team contest is scheduled for one ball.
here together have been so close to getting that win, to dethroning Scyther and Chungus, but it seems like something happens every single week. Baby Keith, you've been there, you've lived it, you've seen what's happened. We released some footage of an attack pre-match that made things not go so well had our Horvitz attacked before a matchup these men were scheduled to have a week ago. Listen, man, Chungus and Scyther are one of the slimiest guys I've ever seen and been in the ring with. They would do any and everything to keep the tag team titles within their grasp. But you know what? The Miami boys are better together. They went against each other. They battled each other for the better part of two years. And I have the utmost confidence in these guys to get the win over Chungus and Scyther. These guys know how to rumble. These guys know how to win titles. And are we gonna see the pants? And I think these guys know how to rip pants off. Is Hidar gonna come along for it? Always that reluctant. He is. But I'm not gonna lie, when you got Ori hyping you up, you gotta rip that pants away. Look at that, lands on his, lands on his head. The man can do anything. The gear looks fantastic, by the way, as well. Simon says, creating the Emerald Empire, buying the contract of quite a few talented men, including our WWN Proving Ground Tag Team Champions. It's Scyther, it's Chungus, and it is a main event, part one, if you will, for tonight's burnout event. So Simon says he's like the businessman of that group, right? He, he's calling the shots, correct? At this point, yes, indeed. Well, Trevin, I don't know who I gotta talk to. It might be Simon, but I've been screwed out of out of that multimedia title many of times that Hudson has in his grasp, and he is under, Simon says. So maybe I gotta go holler at that boy. But right now, we gotta focus on the tag team titles. That's it, we're gonna find out in mere moments who is gonna come away as our Proving Ground Tag Team Champions are better together, they're gonna finally get their comeuppance. Or I guess really the comeuppance is on site there in Chungus, we get the opportunity to get the retribution. I don't know, as Simon says out there, it's only gonna get worse. Hey. Let's set things down to Michael James for the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first the challenger, standing to my right. Feel here, OCC Roadhouse. You hear the reaction. Sight. Well, Michael James hit the biggest point. It's going to say the big fight feel. It has been a long time coming, and because of the number of ways that Scyther and Chungus have been able to save those championships when in the most danger they could be. Well, hey, guess what? Try some of what you've done before and you are giving up a championship here tonight. Once again, titles change hands, DQ or count out. But you and I both know, Keith, Simon says we'll have an answer. He will have a strategy. Oh, he's definitely gonna have a strategy. He's definitely gonna have an answer. He's probably gonna have a plan A, B, and C, but the champions right now do not have the champion's advantage that most title matches have because if Chunk is inside there, get DQ'd or counted out, they will lose the title. 
Once again, official Ben Ruberg making his debut on one of our live streams. Junior official has a tough match to have to handle here because you got to watch somebody like Scyther who's starting things off for the tag champ. Cypher has 18 plus years in the sport. Think about that, Kiki. What were you doing 18 years ago, buddy? Woo! 18 years ago? What I was. <laughs> Eight? Something there, like that. There you go, exactly. So you were just barely learning how to read and write. And in my case, 18 years ago, I was already out of college. But still, from the perspective of the knowledge learned here, that's the deal. Like, Scyther has so much experience. He is so strong and agile. He knows how to have that base, uses that lower center of gravity. But then you look at Ori Gold, who also has a decade experience. Oh, yeah. Because he started wrestling Woo! so young. 14 years old, but... Yeah, Ori started when he was 14. Scyther has actually traveled overseas. He's been all around the world. There's a ton of experience in this ring right now. Hey. Honestly, I think the ref has probably the least experience out of everybody in the ring. Well, there's no question on that, respectfully, yes. You're gonna need you're gonna need to take Ben's career and probably times it by about 18 to hang out with Scyther, but from oh. the perspective of when it comes to unity as a tag team, better together, of course, brothers from different mothers been together for years, but so has Scyther and Chungus, and oh, there you go. A little bit of a little bit of what's goose for, good for the goose is good for the gander. Yeah. So uh, to me, to me, it's interesting to see not only that cartwheel, the agility. I I absolutely love better than. Hold on, hold on. They gonna do it? Oh. Uh, I'm gonna, 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 gonna do it with them. But this is a, this is what you have. You have brothers against a teacher and his student. You you took the words out of my mouth. For about five six years, Chungus and Scyther have been together, and Chungus. Knows everything. Ooh, what a boot from Scyther, but could be the end already. You know, I love me a drop. Is there any concern here? The official with the green hair and notice the green on the. You know what? On the We're here. We're here. Because yeah. I noticed the same thing. I was like, that's a little too, a little too close to what Chung and Scyther and Simon all have on. Of course, our academia is also running around with green hair. We'll see her on Shine 79. Oh! Watch out here, Simon. Simon, don't forget, you get counted out, buddy. Them titles is going home with Better Together. They're running out of time. What is Simon doing? Simon, what has he got going on? Somebody tell Simon that he is not in this match, that he's only on the outside. There is no question. Simon is a genius, but... This may be the moment where if the umpire throws you out of the game, you just cost the game to your team. Well, I mean, to what? Oh. Shoves, shoves the ref. And now you see Simon backing off, but that gave extra time for, well, at least for a moment, it looked like Scyther was gonna take advantage, but. Oh, two boots taking out Scyther. It could be the end. Funny, Chungus has barely even gotten into this matchup. You keep in sight the rim, which is smart. You know, you don't want to get the big Chungo in there. That's a big dude. He's also got quickness, and he also has a lot of strength. Hey, hold on. Well, and knows how to distract, pulling some hair and everything else. And Scyther took advantage. I always point out Scyther trained by ECW legend Mikey Whipwreck. Heck, it was Mikey and... Scyther tag team twice champions in YWC up north in Long Island. But here's Chunkus now, one half of our WWN Proving Ground tag team champions. Oh, Trevin, I think I know what's about to happen. Go on. It looks like sexy Chungus has entered the building. Kids, cover your eyes, please. Yeah. I was hoping the whole sexy and sultry thing was over with the Emerald Empire being created, but I guess in this moment, Ooh. Ooh, what a boot! Yeah, I was about to say that was a sexy chop, but that was Lateral. a devastating boot. And I can't get over how well Chungus could get that boot up. Chungus is already, what, 6'2", six 6'3", six to begin with? Gotta be 6'3". What, 230, 240? Looks like he's leaning out in a good way as well. Ooh, getting out of the way, Hadar! Chungus had leaned out, put some muscle on. Strength has gotten extremely leveled up, as well as his knowledge because of this guy right here, his 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 teacher, his professor, Scyther. Yeah, Scyther was able to get in there. Oh, look at the agility of Hadar. 
And now Ori Gold's been tagged in. I thought things have been cut oh, off long enough. Lord. Goodbye, Chungus. And the kick to the gut. Flurry oh. of action ending in the neck breaker. Ori Gold. Ori is about as hot as my lighter right now. He is a house of fire. You do anything to his best friend and Ori goes nuts. Get kicked in the mouth if you touch Ori's best friend. Trust me, I know. We got a letter here in the WWN offices. This time, actually, Ori managed to spell help at WWNlive.com, right? And, uh, it was a very nice letter. We, we did the, may have seen the video up on our social media. Thanking the WWN officials for giving this opportunity. And it looks like right now, Ori on fire. Ori or might be, ooh, fired in head first. Right there, edge of the ring. The wood hits your face. If Ori was on fire, just call Chung Chungus the fire extinguisher because Ori is out right now on his backside. And Simon, and Simon says, room. been debating and arguing with fans at ringside all the while inside of the ring. Ori Gold being just destroyed by Slater and Chungus. I think Simon was about to, about to backhand, a, backhand the audience member and his ring flew off. Oh, Ori fighting, fighting from his knees, fighting from his heart. Yeah, the pivotal moment. Ori needed to find a way, but unfortunately did not. Trevin, man, I'm trying to tell you, dog. Chungus is a big dude. One knee will drop you to the floor. All the wind will leave your body and you'll be gasping for air. WWE and Faithful, the better together chance. It's the quick tags here, bringing in Scyther. Unity is the name of the game. We talked about it earlier, Keith. You know well as being part of the Miami boys. You work together as a team, and teams win in a team sport like tag team wrestling. There's a reason these two, Scyther and Chungus, stand atop the mount. You know, we asked that question earlier. Was it going to be the, the chemistry of the brothers or the student-teacher chemistry that's going to have the advantage? And right now, the student-teacher chemistry is absolutely dominating better together as Ori is getting yoked out right now by Scyther. And it was great placement by the veteran. Now, Damn. pulling down again, Ori Gold, just when it looks like Ori might have been getting a little help. Oxygen is being cut off. You, again, have lived this yourself. You find yourself so far from the ropes, you can't yep. breathe, yep. sweats in your face, you got, a, you got a nut, like Simon says, yelling at you. And then you got a veteran like Saito who puts his body in between you and your partner, so it makes it even further distance, and then at the same time, you're closer to Saito's partner, which is where you don't want to be, and that's why Ori right now is in dire strength, and Chungus is stomping a mud hole through Ori's chest. So I'm going to ask you point blank, he what do you do if you're Ori Gold right now? How do you persevere this kind of an assault? You know, you dig down deep, you get into that tank, you get into that second win, and you try to get the fresher guy in the ring because you're laying draped over the ropes half out the ring and you're getting choked the life out of you. You need to get out of there before it's too late. And that is the beauty of the whole situation. The distraction, oh, oh the elbow, pinball. Listen, I might drop a better elbow, but nobody drops a more devastating elbow than Chungus. The man comes down with a position right where he needs to place it, and it does the most damage that I probably have ever taken and have ever seen somebody take. And there Simon and says, look at that. during the distraction, being the one again. The distraction that was able to allow Simon Says to continue this assault. All of the choking going on, officials distracted. But remember, if that official, if Ben Ruberg had turned around, title would have changed hands. It's changed a dangerous hands. game Simon Says is playing. But yet, you said it earlier, the man has a plan, the man has an answer. You can just tell when you're talking to Simon Says. This guy can think four five, six moves past you. Imagine a chess game against somebody like that. I, would, I wouldn't want to be part of it. I'd have a headache trying to probably wrap my brain around to even be able to outthink and outsmart somebody like Simon Says. Oh, that's like trying to outcrazy Scyther. There's no way you're going to do that. But look at Ori going to the top. Desperation move. Oh! The double drop kick. Could it pay off? You said it well. It is a desperation move. It is a moment where if this doesn't go right for Ori, could be the end of the matchup. Challengers could lose, but if Ori can get the Hadar Horvitz right now, this could be it. Hey, doesn't go right. Ori's got to get left and get up out of there because here comes Hadar. Boom! 
big forearm. Let me double up. Can I get a triple? No, sir. Duck him. Kick him. Down those scythes. Now watch out for Chungus, though. Chungus oh, coming in. Oh, it's getting caught oh, with those oh, oh, beautiful oh, oh, jabs. Oh, oh. My goodness. He gave him a coupon 10 for a dollar. <laughs> I don't even know how Chung has had the wherewithal to. Oh! Elbow caught there. Hadar Horvitz, so talented as well. We talked hey! about Ori started young. Hadar started at 13. It's crazy to see young men that really have over a decade in the sport, so young still in their early 20s. Hadar wants the youngest wrestler in Israel. You know what's crazy? Seeing that Hadar is moving like that after being attacked last week by these guys. And oh my God, the double team. Yeah, lung blower followed yeah. by the, the sent on the pin and a cypher save things. Man is a grizzled vet. He knows when to come in and save it for his team. But he gets absolutely dumped and almost through the guard. That was a critical moment. Cypher indeed saved things for his team, but was dumped out for the trouble. Now Hadar Horvitz he is damn. tagged in. Chungus is alone. Yeah, Cypher damn near bought a ticket as far as he flew into the crowd. Chungus is all alone. Simon is going crazy. Oh! You see that? Yeah, Better Together is able to stop right before things got bad and hit a double drop. Kick. This is why they're brothers. They share the same brain. They know when to cover up each other. Chungus is all by himself. Oh! High low! Yeah, basically a total elimination. This is the end, maybe. Two count only. Chungus, bro. You got eight. I ain't gonna be honest with you. Was that a slow count? I don't know if that was a slow count. Think about it. The official was all over the place trying to catch up to the action. True. But, but, man, if that was any closer than 2.99999, I, I probably maybe left out nines. That was insane. I don't even think you could put a slip of a piece of paper under the referee's hand. That's how close it was to coming down for three. And the chop right there to the neck. Cypher back in oh. the ring. Things have broken down, and now it's already oh. Who's caught with that stunner? You, oh, you don't never want to see Chungus go to the top. He's a flying Dutchman. The big splash, and I believe these are the two legal men, unless I'm confused. I know Chungus is no. legal. This is legal. The pin. How are he even breathing? The face of Simon says tells the story. Absolute shock from the Emerald Emperor. Yo, my man Ori just took a big Big, and I can't stress this enough, big splash from the big Chungus and somehow had the energy to kick out. He's still breathing. He's still fighting. If you doubted for a moment the importance of these championships, the WWE Improving Ground Tag Team Championship, now you know, and there's the fire from Ori Gold. Watch out for Simon Says. He actually chopped Chungus down. Simon Says doing what he does. And that is what's best for the team. And inside of the ring. Oh my God. Cypher with the belt. Oh! Not like this. No shot, bro. And the official has no clue. That should have been the end of the matchup. Or he might be legit unconscious. No way. Where's the dark? No! He's gotta be super huge. What? Is it going to take to beat the challengers? They refuse to quit here in this matchup. Bro, the bell ringer was ready to ring the bell. Everybody thought it was over after that. How is Ori still alive? Look at Chungus. Chungus is like, you know what? Uh, oh, not the, the bell. The you gotta watch out. Time. The officials paying attention. If you hit, if you hit Ori Gold with that championship belt, the bell oh! takes hands, but it's dead. Scyther was the one hit. And that is not a disqualification. The double Savant kicks. Chungus is out. They got the big men out. They got Scyther isolated, middle of the ring. After being clocked with the title. Oh! Middle of the ring planted. No chance.
listen to the reaction. All of the OCC Roadhouse coming to life for better together. What a moment to see it finally happen. And maybe keep how many ways from Sunday was there an attempt to force this thing to, to be Come whether it was a disqualification or distraction. So many ways better together almost lost the match. Instead, victorious and our new champion. Yo, Ori is an absolute workhorse. The man persevered. Her dark came in clutch. They withstood everything Chung is inside to throw at him. Title belts, Simon's interference, and they have captured the tag team titles once again. Wow! A bad night for the Emerald Empire, but a great night for Better Together, the crowd favorites here. Hey, yo, what's going on down here, though? Simon looks very upset. Put, almost looks like he's about to put his hands on this Well, keep in mind, as much as there's a celebration in the reg right now, as much as there's a lot of excitement, Simon says that his composure could change in just a mere moment because it is almost time for the FIP World Heavyweight Championship match. Our second of two main events here coming absolutely free, both Facebook and YouTube. Keep in mind, if you're watching right now and you're looking for Shine 79, Shine 79 will begin not very long after WWE Improving Ground burnout ends had some technical difficulties delaying, kicking things off officially. But you will still have the full Shine 79 event on WBNlive.com, on Club WBN. You get all that information, WBNlive.com, including Eva Lee defending the Shine Championship against Zaya Brookside. You've got Shink and Fake. Will they become Shine Tag Team Champions against Kelsey Reagan and Lindsay Snow? We just saw these two better together. Unlikely able to find a way to defeat the odds. Could have it at Shine Wrestling. So much more. WBNlive.com for all that information. But it is time for the main event. Let's hush up and get to it. Hey! Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for your... As I mentioned, Simon says, disheveled, coming back here, pie-facing a fan. I don't even think our cameras caught that, thank God. WWE Multimedia Champion, Jonathan Hudson. His title not on the line here tonight. Shouldn't even have the damn title. But winning the Southern Stampede back at FIP, Established Dominance 2024. You can check out Established Dominance right now as part of your club WWN subscription on WWNlive.com. I'll talk a little more about that matchup, the Final Four, and more in a mere moment. But it is time for this place to go nuts. Yeah, I will give it to him. Hudson did win the Stampede match. I will give it to him. He did earn this shot. But I ain't gonna lie, Trevin. Here comes the guy. Here comes the man. Here comes the dude! There he is! My boy! He's real! He's raw! He is your FIP Heavyweight Champion! He is August Arsois! That's my guy right there, man! You know! Two. Absolutely! No, I gotta, I gotta support my boy, man! He's coming away with the W! 216 days, FIP World Heavyweight Champion. And there is a lot on the line here because set up. Teach, we've had the opportunity to join with our friends at Setup Thailand Pro Wrestling on July the 27th, IWA Japan 30th anniversary, Hardcore Forever. August Artois set to defend the FIP World Heavyweight Championship. 
However, baby Keith, if August is not victorious here tonight and Jonathan Hudson wins the championship, Jonathan Hudson heads to Thailand to set up Thailand Pro Wrestling on July the 27th. It's gonna be a big deal. You gotta thank a lot of people internationally, people who have went Planning to go to Bangkok to see that title defended. They want to know who's going to be the one defending it. Man, Trevin, if you think Hudson is beating my boy Argus Artois, you must have got in my stash. Because ain't no way my boy's going down. He's going to go over to Thailand. He's going to defend that title. And he's going to come right back with it. Now, well, indeed, we will find out in just mere moments here. Argus Artois. It is insane to see how popular August Archois has become because really he's not changed his ways very much whatsoever. But instead, the people just love him for who he is. The absolutely bloody and violent battle with Brian Brock, how he ultimately became our champion. But let's send things down to Michael James for the official introductions. Hey! Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first the challenger standing to my left. I can assure you this, that's not just a moniker. This is a man who will speak his mind. He will say whatever he wants. And honestly, Keith, I just suddenly had this kind of lump in my throat where I realized we're live on Facebook, we're live on YouTube. Uh, and ooh, what's going on here? A little bit of history between these two. Um, you see Simon trying to give August a hug. August saying, hey, watch yourself. Of course, I mentioned the history. We've talked a bit. 
earlier tonight, especially when, when we had that Sicilian Street fight. August, also trained by Francisco Chiazza. Francisco, an absolute best friend of, of Simon Says, but the reality is, oh, listen to this. You hear it. You hear it. This is what it's all about, the FIP World Heavyweight Championship. Official Billy Grace. And oh, oh man! The attack, the attack, the attack by Jonathan Hudson. As soon as August Archois took his eyes off the ball, but as I was starting to mention, Simon says said, "Look, nothing personal, August Archois, but I spent a lot of money to acquire the contracts of these men, including Jonathan Hudson, who won the Southern Stampede." So look at the final four: the FIP Florida Heritage Champion Sideshow, the returning Drew Gulak. You had Brian Brock and, of course, Jonathan Hudson. Brock gets eliminated by both Sideshow and Gulak. And as soon as those two men hit the ground, or should I say he hit the ground, those two men turned around. Brock grabbed the feet, held on, and Hudson used it for the advantage and was able to win the Southern Stampede. And, of course, right now, August Archois showing the fire, making the comeback. But Hudson, a dangerous man. We've seen just a flip has a switch has flipped in Hudson over the last seven, eight months. Suddenly talking about Hollywood, what a yeah, yeah. DDT. We can definitely talk about man. Hollywood as there is a two count right there from August. The man is Hollywood because he's playing and acting like he's a champion. Well, and of course Hudson will name drop everybody on the planet. He's, you know, the whole how many degrees of Kevin Bacon. I think he considers himself one to zero degrees away from every celebrity. And the man uh, is, he's turkey bacon at best. <laughs> Look at him, grabbing his dome piece. Bald head, glistening, walking around. How about grab that? There goes August up and over, wasting no time. August Artois, we already talked about, set up Thailand Pro Wrestling. But on top of that, August the 25th is when Full Impact Pro returns here to the OCC Roadhouse, WWN Live. Back here and at the crib. You know on Sunday, August the 25th, FIP presents Heat Stroke. And you know August Artois, if still champion, will be defending that championship. But for sure, the championship will be on the line regardless of whether or not it's Jonathan Hudson, whether it's Siobhan, who's the one that's gonna get the title shot in Thailand. But August can't be thinking about that. He's gotta be thinking about the headliner. He's gotta be thinking about how good Jonathan Hudson is. Do you see what my boy's doing right now? He's absolutely working, Hudson. You think he's thinking about the future? He's locked in right now, putting damage on the so-called headliner on Mr. Hollywood one himself. Our official Billy Grace giving a little latitude here. You notice the men are fighting outside the ring for quite a while, and bad things happen outside of the ring. What is Hudson planning? Oh my God! Suplex on the floor. Artois able to counter it. And you see the damage done to Hudson, but it hurt Artois too. Keep that in mind. Again, nice having you here in the booth, Hudson. Or excuse me, Keith, because you can describe how much Hudson just got hurt there, as well as August. Bro, I it hurt me watching that. That is no no give. That's a floor. That's, that's the floor. You're getting slammed on the floor, taking over somebody's head with a suplex. His back has got to be in pain. That's why he's fighting out of it to not get done up like that again. Yeah, Archois was trying to be the one to throw the suplex this time, but instead, in some trouble here, the counter head first goes Hudson. And keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, if you were watching throughout social media this week, things got ugly. Things started with August Archois being usual. I'll say a few choice things and Hudson saying a few choice things and next thing you know August had a response that got a little too personal for Hudson and Hudson was so angry we almost didn't release the video and I mean that the number of bleeps we had to put into the video just to get it online I mean Hudson came in here looking to take things out on our trial but ooh, did the knee just give out on Hudson Hudson just blows knee out oh my god it's gotta be terrible Simon might blow a gasket Chuck is inside to lose the tag titles Hudson possibly me blowing out. That means he would have to forfeit this match and possibly his multimedia title. You never know, depending on how bad the injury could be. But for sure, if this match can't continue, and and you, ooh, looks like Hudson might be bleeding this too. Might be for, oh, he's throwing up the X. Now, if this is really an injury, the official Billy Grace can stop this matchup. You got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, 
a lot of things that happen in our sport, I think a lot of people don't realize, not everything is this fantastical moment that, oh, wow, you did a 785 whatever the hell and you landed on your head and you got hurt. Look at Kevin Nash ripped his quads, just making a tag and walking into the ring back in 2003. And that's no knock on Kevin Nash. That's the point is you get injured, things can happen, and, and knees aren't meant to go left and right, but it happens so often. And that could be what just happened to Hudson. You see even August is concerned. Is it over? Dude, like, what's up? You gonna stop this thing? You know, injuries, injuries happen, bro. Like, freak injuries happen for real. With the, uh, our commissioner of WWE Improving Our McLean's actually in the house. Rick's on his way down. We're gonna, we're gonna check things out. You see, here comes Rick um, coming down. Wow. I hate to end a main event like this, ladies and gentlemen, but, you know, it's a situation that... So I was saying, even as things got a little nasty between Hudson and August, you, you just don't want... I mean, you don't want to see somebody get physically injured to see... You don't. A career short. You know, you might not like each other. You might get hot-headed. It's like when there's an injury in, in, in sports, in, in, in football. You know, and you see here Hudson. You know, I, you know I, I really think I think this thing must be over at this point. I just uh, as a competitor, you do not want the match to end like this, whether you're the one injured or not, because this is just not fair to anybody. It's not fair. It's, 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 it's not fair to the fans. It's not fair to your to the competitors. You see, Simon says he's upset. He's trying to convince everybody. No, give him some time. We'll be fine. But. Unfortunately, there really aren't any timeouts in professional it's, wrestling. It's not. And Stephen Ox is saying, "Look, just back off. Let the guy go. This, you don't, this isn't. This isn't. You know. You don't get a I, thirty I get, second. You don't get a sixty second timeout. There's none of that. You really don't. I mean, the time here. I know there's concern, and, and you see, even even Archois. Ooh, wow. Archois town says, "Look, just just give the guy some damn space. Just give the guy some damn space. Just give the guy some space." And I think, I think, you know, I think it's one of those things where, um, you know, I hate to, I, I hate to just end it like this, um, Keith. But I think that wow. might be what what we're at. And uh, you know, again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, WWN proving ground burnout. You know, it's been a, it's been a great night of action here. The entry to Jonathan Hudson again, as stated, very unfortunate. Um, we'll have to obviously get some medical attention. Oh! Watch my words. If we were on WWN Live, I would tell you what I think about Jonathan Hudson now. But you know what? He's just a piece of crap. Yo, yo, yo. I ain't gonna lie, man. I'm gonna try to keep my composure with you because that is absolutely disgusting. That is gut wrenching right there. How do you fake an injury in the middle of a match? You have no integrity for yourself. And up and over goes August Archois. You, you can hear just the whole life of the buildings left. They really thought they watched a man hurt. Now here's Look Hudson. Look at this man doing squats and everything. He's absolutely, this is, I'm about to throw up, bro. Do you know how lucky Hudson is that, that Billy Grace hadn't called for the bell? I really think in the mind of the official is a formality. Hadn't got around him yet. There was so much concern about Jonathan Hudson. And instead, the match continues. Oh, I ain't gonna lie, bro. If I didn't want to get fined, I would have ran down there myself. Because that is absolutely disgusting. Bro, you don't do that, man. I really thought I might have saw a knee pulled out. Could have been the end of a career. Think about it. Hudson, 17, 18 years in the sport, in the shape of his life. But guess what? When you get into your 30s, things happen. Things happen, man. August. I August. believed it. I am so mad right now. This is one of the more expressive competitors to ever have stepped foot in the ring. And this man gave respect to Hudson after they went back and forth on social media. And Hudson pulled some crap like this, bro. Terrible, man. He should be ashamed of himself. And you notice now it's Hudson targeting the knee. So it's almost like Hudson says, hey, guess what? I'll fake a knee injury, and how about I injure your knee instead? And he thinks it's funny. He thinks it's like, look at him. He thinks this is a... He thinks this is amusing. Well, and oh my God. think about what you talked about. Like Sorry to cut you off, Keith. Think about what you talked about earlier. The concern when it came to the Multimedia Championship. If Hudson had really been hurt, 
could he have defended in time when he's had a vacated championship? What happens to Artois? Let's say Artois, if his knee keeps getting damaged, even if he finds a way to survive, what happens? He might not That's, be able to go to title. The, the whole idea of our sport isn't to hurt your opponent and permanently oh injure your opponent. It's to win the matchup, and this has to be the end. I can't believe we have a new champion like oh. this. I thought I, ain't gonna, I thought I was over too. I ain't gonna lie with you, dog. I'm uh, disgusted right now. In a straight up match, I got all the money in my bank account. I'm putting it on August. But when you got Hudson pulling crap like this, pulling disgusting moves like this, there's there's not much you can do, man. I really am furious here. Going after the knee, you got the half crack, but the knee that's been targeted here by Jonathan Hudson. Look at Hudson, bro. Proud of his work. I can't get over it. I really cannot get over it. Anybody that associates with this guy should be ashamed of himself. He is Hollywood. He's an actor, man. He's playing as a pro wrestler, man. This guy does not do the thing. He does not do it the right way. It's, it's just unacceptable. It's just... I'm, I'm, I'm upset, bro. I ain't gonna Artois, hold on, Artois, rolling through, rolling out. And they ended up in the ropes, and now Artois oh! signs of life, but you see the damage has been done to the leg of Artois. Using, using both legs to stomp him out. And, and it's part of what makes it so hard. Oh! Dangerous landing. Dangerous landing for, for Hudson into those turnbuckles here. And Artois going for the pin. So close. Keep, I'm still in shock of, of what Hudson pulled, and I'm giving it to Artois for rallying, but damage has been done to Artois. But I think the trust that just got totally, totally taken wow. advantage of. Wow. Could be it. The Blue Thunder Bomb. Woo! Jesus, bro. The, the power of Hudson. It was a millisecond. It, a millisecond later, there would have been a new champion, and we would have had a, a dual champion. An absolute violation of trust once again. When somebody pulls something like that, you can't not just trust them as a competitor. You can't trust them as a human being. You know the entire backstage now are going to look at this Jonathan Hudson. Yeah, he probably already thought he was an a-hole. But I don't think anybody is ever going to believe this guy if he needs something, if there's any kind of danger. Is it worth it for Jonathan Hudson to become FIP World Heavyweight Champion that much that he's willing to do something like that? It seems to be that he wants to do any and everything to get his hands on that FIP World title. And you know what? He's not just an a-hole. He's a damn scumbag. And he just got dropped on his back right now. And I hope my boy August goes as high as he can and drops him again. Oh! Rockbuster connects. Middle of the ring. I think that leg is still giving him some pain. He couldn't, he couldn't capitalize immediately on the cover. Finally getting in there. Not quite enough, though, and, and to the point you well said, not only is Artois showing the effects of the matchup, could barely even get the arm on Hudson, let alone trying to hook the leg, really further force down Hudson. But now you look at Hudson, and even Hudson is showing tons of damage. Yeah, Hudson's showing some, some fatigue right now. He's getting up pretty slow as August is rallying. He's got the whole entire crowd. Damn, he's got the commentary booth rallying behind him, too. Yeah, look, I try to be impartial, Keith. I am oh. glorious right now. I would love to see Jonathan Hudson have to pay for what happened here. And what's Artois got in mind? Hey. Oh, look. You all right? You all right? Uh, and Artois, Artois like... This is the problem. Is oh! Like, there's the kick. I think Artois was trying to get his knee back in place. I wouldn't be surprised if Artois' knee was popped out of socket earlier. His kneecap might be split or something. You, 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 you never know what happens until you go get a check. Look at that. He can't even lift us. And you know what, Trevor? I commend you fully for being an impartial commentator. But when guys pull things like that, it, you, I don't think you have a choice, bro. No, it ruins the sport. It ruins the sport. Whoa. Oh. Oh. Quick gets out of the way. The roll. Hey. Handful of tights. Doesn't matter. August wins. <laughs> He's real, he's raw, and he's gonna get payback no matter what the situation is. It looked like it looked like August kind of faked the knee injury as well to get the upper Hudson. Yeah, I'm not sure if he was faking it or not, but bottom line, August Artois victorious here tonight. WWE Proving Ground Burnout in August will head to Thailand Pro Wrestling.
set up Thailand. It is July the 27th in Bangkok, Thailand. IWA Japan's 30th anniversary. FIP World Heavyweight Championship will be on the line as August Artois defends against Shabam. You can get more information on that and our relationship, WWN, with Set Up Thailand Pro on WWNlive.com as well as, what the hell? Is that, that's Brian Brock. This loose, this guy's a loose cannon, I ain't gonna lie. Of course, Brian Brock, former FIP World Heavyweight Champion, has a DQ victory over August Archois for Back at Everything Burns. And Brian Brock has wanted his hands on August Archois. I was just about to say, August the 25th is when FIP returns to WWN Live. It's heat stroke, and a big lariat folds up August Archois. Bro, bro, Brian Brock is a big, big man. And when a guy like that attacks you from behind, it hurts even worse. This is out of control here after oh everything God. that just went down in the championship oh. match. There's the bull rope. It was a bull rope match. That's how August Artois defeated Brian Brock. It was the most hellacious match I've ever seen in my life. You can see it, ladies and gentlemen. We need help. We need help. We need to get somebody out here. Where the hell's the rest of the officials? This attack. I gotta ask, what kind of shapes are Chua gonna be July the 27th in Thailand? What kind of shapes are August gonna be in if he were to retain there on August the 25th when FIP's back here at the OCC Roadhouse for Heat Stroke? All the information on that on WBNLive.com. Keith, I know there's Kev. Oh! Absolutely out of control. The official was taken out. He's about to do the plugs and the stream, all that stuff. Keith, this is just, this is just out of control. Oh, this is, this is. What the hell is wrong with Brock, bro? Is this what the Emerald Empire is? Is this what we're gonna have to deal with in the World Wrestling Network? Keith, any parting thoughts? Oh, he just absolutely blasted Billy. He just blasted Billy. This is the only thought I have right now is that I'm absolutely sick to my stomach with both of these guys in the ring, bro. There's our commissioner, Rick Dames. Thank you, Justice. Brian Brock, our WWE commissioner for Proving Ground. Rick Dames just told Brian Brock he's suspended him. Brock, you might be pissed off. Do not mess with Rick Dames. Boy, you don't want a hefty fine. Ten bands? Boy, Brock better get up out of there before he ain't got a wallet. Well, I get that feeling after what I just heard there. Brian. Yo, shout out to Rick Thames for laying the law down. And I'm not sure exactly how long the suspension will be, but I have a big feeling FIP on August the 25th. Heat stroke. I don't think you're going to see big man Brian Brock buckshot. He's better calm down. Yo, the man is a loose cannon, bro. Again, thank you so much for joining us on this stream. Again, WWN Proving Ground every Friday, live from the WWN Training Center in Port Ritchie. You can see it on Club WWN and YouTube as well on the WWN Live YouTube. Of course, Shine Wrestling, Shine 79, coming up very shortly on WWNLive.com. Get all the info for that. For Baby Keith, for Michael James, I'm Trevin Adams. Thanks for joining us. WWNLive.com for all things World Wrestling Network. Thanks again. Have a great night. Appreciate you, Trevin. Hey!